I've been a prison guard since I was 18 years old, prison guard all my life. You know, some of these inmates, I have known them since I was 18 years old. You know, the gang leaders, the gang, you know, the higher up, you know, guys that started out in the state joint back in the late 70s. I knew them when I was in the state joint, you know, they was the inmate and I was a guard. And here we are 10 years later, I'm still a guard, or an inmate in the federal joint. Now, there's a code in prison. Anytime, every prison I have ever worked at, if a guard gets assaulted by an inmate, that inmate knows he's got an ass whooping coming. But at Marion, they wouldn't let us do anything. Uh, it was like they was encouraging inmates. If you assault a guard, we're not going to do nothing. But if you bust out a light bulb or you bust a window, we're going to beat your ass. Shawnee Correctional Center is going to become the new super maximum security for the state, the way Marion is for the federal government. But they can't lock it down until after two guards get killed in the state system. So that's why the state prisons are having so much trouble. It's because the administrations are fucking with them, trying to get a riot going. So if two guards get killed, they're going to take all the gang leaders, all the bad hardcore inmates in the state system, they're going to put them in Shawnee, and they're going to put it on 24-hour deadline. And they get an open budget. I knew a riot was going to happen any damn day. Any time I knew it was going to happen. So I figured every time they put me inside, I figured, well, this is it. It's going to go down here. So I'd keep my eyes on certain inmates and certain groups to see if anything was going to kick off. And I could tell by the way these uh, seven or eight inmates, is all, all of them was Indians. Latin kings and shit like that. I could tell by the way they were just looking at each other and laughing that something was going down. Uh, there's some inmates up there that are known psychopaths. I mean, have killed 10 to 13 inmates before. Uh, the case in point, uh, Sonny Bur he's killed eight inmates and they put him out in population. Now, I mean, the inmates uh, was terrorizing this man. He is a fucking maniac. The guard is even scared of him. He walks down the corridor, you put your back up against the wall and keep an eye on him, you know? He's just one dangerous son of a bitch. And they put him out in population. And he didn't last out there maybe three weeks. And I think he killed another inmate. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. He had no business being out in population. You know, there's certain lines, if you cross them, you're, you're a dead man. Some of these inmates are my friends, and I don't want to give their names until they get hurt. But I uh, had a couple guys come up to me and said, hey, hey, oh, watch your back. They're going to kill a guard. I said, what the hell for? Well, I reported this to the captain. I said, hey, I just had some inmates tell me they're going to take out a guard. And the captain told me, he said, oh, hell, that's just part of the job. That's just rumors. Don't worry about it. So, uh, so uh, this time, instead of going to the captain, I went to the assistant warden. And I believe it was told, well, come let me out. He said, hey, well, I've been hearing a lot about you. You're a goddamn troublemaker, and you're spreading false rumors, and you're terrifying the other staff. I said, you get down there and do your job and keep your fucking mouth shut. I don't hear you repeating any more rumors. And that's when I told him, I said, bullshit. I said, won't you tell everyone these fucking guards, we're just a meat on a fucking hook. You're dangling out in front of them. They see what they're going to do. Won't you tell these guards here, they're going to take this prison over, and they're going to kill every fucking one of us. You people don't care. He pointed his finger at me, and he looked at the lieutenant. He pointed his finger at me, and he says, I want that man. Uh, a lot of guards was coming to work, you know, uh, drunk. Some of them was on drugs. A lot of guards would just break down crying, go home. Uh, a lot of them call in sick. We was always shorthanded. And a lot of them up there is alcoholics. And they just, there's some fucked up people packing knives. And there was three guns in there that I know of. So he just stepped in the boxcar and Gold Nets took the handcuffs off of him, handed him a shank, and then Silverstein come running out with the shank in his hand. And the guard that was standing there with him, he just put his hands up, stepped back out of the way, and said, Tommy, don't do it. 
Tommy said, hey, I don't want you, I want him. So he run past that guard, and he run down there and started stabbing on Klutz. Well, now after Klutz was killed, uh, the administration would not let the guards go down that range to shake down and get the weapon. They wouldn't let the guards shake down any cells. They said, no, just go ahead and run, them, run these guys to showers and wreck cages like nothing happened. We said, what about Klutz's blood all over the place here? When you let these new guards walk through that man's blood, that way they'll remember how goddamn dangerous their job is. Three weeks later, they stabbed a guard, stabbed him 16 times. And as I was running up, coming up to the unit, Officer Palace came stumbling out the door. He was all covered in blood. He fell down to his knees, you know, and says, get Hoffman, hell, get Hoffman. So I turned around and run into the hospital, which is right there next to me. I run in there to get a stretcher. And when I run in there, I saw Ditter lying, laying there on the bed and had blood squirting out of his left side, you know, by his heart, just, you know, bubbling up. So I grabbed him in a bear hug to help stop the bleed. And then I moved him off, off of that table onto another table because I knew Hoffman was in real bad shape if they was all hollering for Hoffman, you know. Another current of inmate, Fred Eagle, buck ass naked down the corridor, and uh, the assistant warden, Cole Hain, in a three piece suit, got his tie and he's dressed real nice. Runs up between his inmate's legs and grabs him by the nuts. Starts jerking and twisting and laughing and having a good time. And yeah, who's fucking who now, boys? Who's fucking who now? They need another guard killed or something. They'll transfer the warden they got out now, and they'll put some hardcore warden in there that'll, you know, get the inmates all pissed off. I don't trust anybody working for the federal government. Not after what the, you know, the lockdown. I knew they was trying to cover it up because the administration was fucking with them, trying to get a riot going. So if two guards get killed, and they get an open budget. That's why I'm trying so hard to bring this out to the media because once somebody investigates this shit. They're going to find out that what I'm telling them is true.